Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Downey and today we're going to be talking about the most anabolic food. So essentially this video is just me using the hyperantocesterone and ectosteroids to kind of point out hypocrisy and think it in the way people think in the fitness industry, but not obviously not everyone thinks this way, I'm just pointing out a massive hypocrisy. So I'm also going to use this opportunity to dispel, to dispel myths around this anabolic food I'm going to mention. So what made me think about this video is the mechanism of action of, or proposed mechanism of action of ectosteroids and tocasterone. So essentially their anabolic ability is attributed to the fact that they stimulate estrogen receptor beta as opposed to estrogen receptor alpha, so they're kind of selective. Um, estrogen receptor beta activation is much different to estrogen receptor alpha activation. Estrogen receptor alpha activation kind of gets all the credit for the actions of estrogen, whereas estrogen receptor beta works a bit differently. So stimulation of this receptor is actually quite beneficial. It's been shown to downregulate estrogen receptor alpha. You don't want too much activation of estrogen receptor alpha because imbalance of that could lead to things such as breast cancer progression and gynecomastia. Um, also, estrogen receptor beta has been linked to improving dementia as well as improving cardiovascular outcomes and obviously its anabolic ability, which has been shown in numerous studies and tocasterone and things like that have been found to have anabolic abilities due to the stimulation of this receptor. So why do I call some people in the fitness community hypocrites? Um, so the reason I do this is because they have no problem promoting these so-called selective phytochemicals like tocasterone that stimulate ER or estrogen receptor beta. But as soon as you were to tell someone you're plant-based or vegan, you are, or that you just simply consume soy, uh, you are labeled a soy boy. So what is a soy boy? So essentially a soy boy is considered someone who is a beta male, someone who has too many female-like characteristics. Not that that should be a negative thing, although it is thought to be such. Um, it's also an absurd concept, and I won't get into it, but it is quite ridiculous. This whole alpha-beta distinction is a bit funny. Um, so why would you be considered a beta male if you ate soy? Well, soy has estrogen. It has estrogen, so you'll become more woman-like. Um, well, yes, soy does contain phytoestrogens, but they're not identical to actual typical estrogens. Um, and by typical estrogens, I mean that uh, those produced by your bodies or exogenous hormones like testosterone, they're actually more similar to the ectosteroids or tocasterone. The uh, phytoestrogens preferentially bind to estrogen receptor beta, like tocasterone, but not only that, they have this other compound called s e uh, which is a selective estrogen receptor beta agonist. So there are many different ways in which it stimulates this estrogen receptor beta. Remember, estrogen receptor beta is different from the typical estrogen receptor alpha. The alpha receptor is more responsible for those typical estrogen characteristics. Soy consumption is actually correlated to lower breast cancer incidence as well as gynecomastia incidence in epidemiological data. Um, its selectivity has been demonstrated to possibly help a hormone receptor positive breast cancer. Remember there are different types of breast cancer. Hormone receptor positive is that uh, breast cancer that grows in response to estrogen and soy consumption does not um, make or pr make this cancer progress, indicating that soy isn't exactly like estrogen. This means it would be more similar to those popularized ectosteroids like tocasterone, as I said. But obviously you don't see people going on cycles of soy extracts 
probably because of the misconception of soy and the whole notion around soy boys and whatnot. However, they mechanistically work identically to terkesterone. Soy does have its downfalls. Um, if you consume soy protein of more than 25 grams a day, there is a much higher spike in IGF-1, which has been shown to possibly make it unsafe in established prostate cancer. But that spike in IGF-1, especially in steroid users, is not much of a concern and is actually thought to be beneficial. So soy has these benefits of stimulating estrogen receptor beta as well as spiking IGF-1. This would make it the perfect compound to sell. But you don't really see soy extracts being sold by individuals like more plates, more dates, and I would put this to the misconception of soy. If you can so readily take terkesterone, um, which is which stimulates estrogen receptor beta, I don't see why you wouldn't want to take something like soy, which does the exact same thing. I'm not telling you to eat soy at all. I'm not promoting it in any sense. Uh, yeah, it's, um, I enjoy eating it, um, but I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying, I'm just pointing out the hypocrisy. If you so readily take something like tocesterone or even arom aromatizable compounds like testosterone or anything that can aromatize into estrogen, I don't see why there is such, the such, or I don't see why soy is hated so much when it works exactly the same. Uh, furthermore, I'm not trying to insult anyone with this video, I'm just making a joke about the popularization of ectosteroids and how if you take ectosteroids you're a soy boy essentially because stimulates estrogen receptor beta, but you don't see that being displayed or spoken about on forums. So I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope I changed your mind about soy or perhaps about ectosteroids. Um, and if you enjoyed it, let me know below, let me know if you disagree with me, what you think, and I will see you in the next video.